Hello and welcome to our new series on defining 6G networks. I'm Guy Daniels and this is the launch program for our second report in our series, What Do Operators Want From 6G? And first of all, thank you so much for all the feedback to our report on what vendors want from 6G, really encouraging support. And if you have not yet seen that first report, go ahead and download it. It's available on the Telecom TV website. You just need to sign up and be part of our community. Full details below this video. So what do we have in this second report? Well, like the first, we have focused on the recent 6G workshop event that was held by the 3GPP in Korea. And just to remind you, there are well over 200 separate submissions, which we have divided into three categories, one report per category, vendors, operators, and what we are calling community, i.e. everyone else. So how did the operator submissions compare with those from vendors? 30 network operators made written submissions to the workshop. And these covered three distinct areas as per the workshop agenda. Overall 6G vision, views on the RAN and views on the system architecture and core network. There were 64 papers submitted in total. These covers shown here are just a sample and we summarised each one and identified some of their major themes and issues. And you can read these summaries in the report. We have a comprehensive directory section where you can quickly see what each company has contributed. We then created a far more detailed analysis of all these submissions, identifying common themes and areas where opinions differed, just as we did for the first report on vendors. Now these submissions covered a lot of ground as you would expect and we have highlighted some of the more interesting quotes here. Simplification keeps coming up time and time again along with the need to reduce the number of specification options. Standalone mode is almost universally requested. There is at this time at least no appetite to repeat the non-standalone experience with 6G. There is though some disagreement about the extent of backwards compatibility with earlier generations, although there is a lot of support to reject speed-centric KPIs in favour of more balanced performance metrics. Spectral efficiency is requested more than new spectrum, perhaps a recognition of the reality. There's precious little appropriate new spectrum for 6G beyond FR3 and certainly no one is singing the praises of millimeter wave or terahertz extensions. And of course 6G has to be very very good. No point in being marginally better than 5G advanced. A reminder though that this is just the start of the 6G standards process. Absolutely nothing has been agreed yet but this is a very important first step. All of these individual views have to somehow be collected into a common set of standards that are agreeable to the whole global industry. And as this report makes very clear, operators do not want a repeat of the 5G process. There are several versions of this diagram in the submissions. This one here comes from SK Telecom and it seeks to show the relationship and importance of cloud native, AI native and green native operations. Deutsche Telekom stresses the need to make a clean break from previous generations, at least those parts which really didn't work and at the same time focus on a more simplified set of specifications. As with the vendor submissions, ISAC, Integrated Sensing and Communication, proved a popular use case to explore and this particular schematic from SK Telecom helps to explain the necessary underlying architecture. Of course, AI shows no sign of stopping, and so it features extremely heavily in the submissions. 
This diagram, for instance, from T-Mobile builds on current RAN ideas. And also this one from AT&T, which shows how cloud native and AI interworks with network and service enablements. A couple of final illustrations concerning network evolution. This one from KDDI calls for a 5G core evolution approach and shows how current and new RAN will service user equipment. And a reminder from Telstra that 6G will be with us for more than 10 years, at least 25 years according to the Australian operator, who provides a possible deployment scenario that takes us to a pure 6G environment. So many compelling ideas and concepts there. So please go ahead and download this latest report and let me know your thoughts. Do get in touch. Our next report, our third one, focused on the community, will be published in about two weeks' time. And this includes input from the satellite industry, as well as enterprises, R&D facilities and telecoms organisations. For now, though, enjoy this report and goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.